Good afternoon and welcome to Summary Judgment Talk Show, our weekly talk show where Ed Peruta and I, Rachel Baird, sit down and talk about timely subjects, current events, the courts, and anything else that comes to mind. We're transmitting live from the American News Media Center here in Central Connecticut. Hi, Ed. How are you, Rachel? Good. Since uh, we had the show last week, well, I think your neck was hurting last week too, right? Uh, a little bit. It was. A oh, little bit. a lot. We had, to, we had to end the show. So you have a cervical collar on this week, and that's helping a little bit. I'm trying everything. Yeah. Um, I've tried the square hot thing you put on your neck. It does I don't know. Whatever. I always call her okay? AMC. She is not going to mellow out. Uh, in the next four years. Oh, she she was taught a lot by Donald Trump. She, exactly. Yeah. But she has not. She's not going to be Pelosi. She's not, and she's not, she's not going to mellow out. She's going to keep going down her road. And there are going to be people, because no matter how you cut the mustard, when the final numbers come in, and I have reason to believe that. Um, it may be difficult, if not impossible, to overcome the electoral college numbers or the um, populist numbers, you know, the, the what do you call people? Any state. Right? Because in each state there's... Are you just wiping your head there? <laughs> in, in each state there are ballots that were improperly submitted, thrown away, lost, didn't get there in time, or whatever, okay? And those numbers need to be eliminated. The, the numbers of mistakes in the voting needs to be eliminated. Why did, it, why did they wait until the fourth year of Donald Trump's term in office? Because of COVID. To say, oh, we're going to have to have people sending in their votes six months ahead of time. Meanwhile, you drive past the gyms and the parking lots are full, and you go. Oh, the we're going to have to. We're going to have to let the votes come in and be counted, even after election day. Okay. Um, there is I, I, but I want to thank Donald Trump. I'm going to I'm going to take nothing away from that man. Okay. Um, I think that time will tell whether he was a uh, excellent president or a bad president. Time is going to tell. Um, time is going to tell how his four years, and I guess we're not giving up on the eight years, but I really need closure. Mayor, Mayor Giuliani really needs to show me something at this point. Well. But I'll say it because I don't think it would be polite for you to say it. If I ever decide to color my hair, it's going to be with one of them spray guns, not with something that runs off when you're sweating. Because I'm, I'm too embarrassed to even show that video of him because to me, that's cruel. That's cruel. Well, I mentioned it the other day and you hadn't even heard of it. So before we came down and showed it, I actually showed it to you and I was watching while let you me, were looking me, at it, let me, let me and and you were, you were visibly, yeah, it's almost like you're suffering the pain. Tissues, please. Yep. Um, let me let me explain. I was criticized, not by everybody, but I was criticized because on Father's Day several years ago, I shot a fatal accident, and I believe that I may have. Let me put some of these here. I may have shot someone's last minutes alive and caught it on camera and put it up on YouTube, okay? And the footage was bought by television stations. It was a, a, a new father, a new father had died on Father's Day in a fatal tree accident, car versus telephone pole or tree. Now, was it cruel for me to put that up on the air? No. Because there was a political reason for putting it up on the air. Well, anti-drunk driving. Let's not call it political, a public interest reason. There, there's I a, think okay, let's use better public, states it. Public interest reason. Yeah. In other words, you want to play games and run away from police officers, this is the shit that can happen. And it happened again recently in Weathersfield on Prospect Street. But 
the fact that he tries to improve his appearance, a woman puts on makeup, um, a man trims his beard. Um, oh, it kind of gives you an insight into his psyche and what's going on in there. Well, that he would do that. Like, he doesn't need to do that. Why is he doing that? 76. 76. Well, um, not that you give up caring, but I, you just need to be comfortable with your point. I have, Stop fighting. I have a very dear friend who's a fellow veteran. You know him. You met him. Um, and he wears a wig. Now, he's worn a wig for the last 30 years. I mean, I guess I could have had a hairpiece, okay? And I've often thought about what would it look like if I got a hairpiece. Yeah, you're right. You know what? Nobody, I, I take that back. Nobody can judge what other people do to alter their outer appearance for whatever internal reasons okay. they have. I, I agree with that. I, you I, know what, Mayor Giuliani? Keep coloring your hair. I talk about Giuliani and the dye running down his cheeks. Okay? I just wonder if he did it himself or if somebody else but you, did it. But you have to wonder if... A candidate, God forbid, a woman ever runs for president and well, I hope had, nobody just and takes had, that out. Women, and has had breast implants, okay? And someone takes a picture of them when they're 25 and a picture of them when they're 45, and all of a sudden they've tripled in size and they're they're perfectly erect. Uh, <laughs> are you gonna start making fun of a female's makeup? That's true. Oh, <laughs> never happened. Ah, well, never happened. I mean, there there are some things. <laughs> there are some makeup techniques. Um, you know, eyeshadow mask. You know, things that you can overdo that people will notice. Like who who's that woman that was married to the preacher in uh, North Carolina? Oh yeah, Jenny Baker. Jenny Baker. People think super oh, fast. she's six inches long. Right. Okay, but let me. It's not too long ago that morning news anchors of the mor anchors of the morning shows didn't have 16 people making them up in a makeup room they were transmitting from their living rooms in their basements okay and you could tell they hadn't been to the same hairdresser they hadn't been to the same makeup artist okay for example i noticed um not going to mention names but there's a woman she she must have eyebrows that are a half an inch high and go across each eye and I'm going oh my god I never noticed that before well she used to have her bangs that would cover them uh, not anymore or maybe maybe now but are we going to start criticizing how we see women visually if they're a television personality or a politician yeah, I get. I guess we always have. You know, I, I don't think I don't think there's anything uh, new in that. But I I think it's very perceptive of you to to point out that this isn't really something you should make fun of, no matter what side it is. Like even even if it happened to Joe Biden, you know, it, it's like isn't there enough substantial to address without Pence had the fly out? land in his hair. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fly land in his hair. I got it. Okay. Um, Speaking of flies. Oh. I learned a new word this week. Oh. I had to look it up. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I was so impressed. She missed it. She's she's reading to me what this document says. No, you had the document in your hand. I had read it. Then you read it. And you read it out loud to me. Because I said, I want you to read it out loud to me. Yeah. And you read it out loud to me. And you kind of went right past what I said. I just, you didn't care. So this document is an opposite brief followed by the United States government United in, a civil, government. in a civil to to a brief that I had filed. Right. It, it was it was their reply brief to a brief that I had filed. And um it said that you know and this you don't have you gotta read it This paper. reminds me of um anus and we should go back to that. Anus. Yeah, because I saw the word that uh, accusing me of engaging in fly specking. <laughs> and, and you know you you you, you I okay. don't. I don't know why lawyers call each other names do and we briefs. Have, do we have that document? Usually on your they phone? say in a brief that's ludicrous. Like 
how does that help solve the issue and help the judge come to a decision by okay. calling the other attorney ludicrous? Do you think a judge ever reads a brief and goes, oh, you know, that attorney called this one ludicrous. I'm going to take that now, into consideration. Now, hold on, hold on a minute. We could probably do a whole show just on that one word. It's a great word. It, it, we, should, we need okay. to look it up. Well, we, we can look it up, but don't you have the document, the actual document? I do. I'll pull if, it if up. If you pull it up, your actual document, okay? So Because the, put it in context exactly like it was used at you. So so okay? the, this this kind of... Who the of, fuck came up with fly specking? The, this, this kind of led me to think about if you were a detective agency or um, what, kind, what kind of other company, but you could fly specker LLC, you know? <laughs> It, it would just show. Well, let's not let's not do a spoiler here. Let me find. The, okay, so um, brief. so you you go ahead and you look for that. Okay, okay. I'll find it pretty um, quick. I I I'm, I, I'm not going to criticize anybody in this, but it's a situation. Okay, and it's I have a I have a doctor that I go to gone to for twenty five or thirty years. And I was in the office practically on hands and knees in pain. Okay. Wait, for which for which pain neck. was this? The neck. No, okay. I've been there for well, the, I, know. I went there for the knee and they had to bring me up the back stairs <laughs> for the generator. Um, the best doctor that I could imagine having who understands me as a human being. I asked him whether I could have a, I guess they're called CAT scans or, or yeah. MRI or something like that on my neck to see if I had a pinched nerve. Now he says that the pinched, the, the areas that I'm describing, because I had circles and magic markers drawn on my shoulders, my neck, my back, so that when I go into the doctor, I can take my shirt off and say, there it is, that's where it hurts. Pretty you funny. Gotta, don't got to feel around. That's it. Pretty funny, yeah. So, um, he he laughs because he's seen it before. He laughed and he says, "Okay." He says, "Everything you're showing me leads me to believe it's C8, cervical eight, and then there's another one that's a it's either a T for thoracic, yeah, and then a T something, T1. I don't know what it was, but I left and it was I'm not getting, you know he." went over my medication uh, because I do take certain drugs that I need to be in constant contact with a doctor. And um, that was on, I don't know what day, but then I guess it was either the next day or two days later, I called his office and I asked the secretary, I said, can you ask the doctor a question? And he sent me for an MRI or a CAT scan of my neck to find out what the hell is causing this pain. Because i got to tell you, I've been crawling around the condo almost in tears. Mm. You know, sitting in a chair, and you, you, the pain is so bad it almost brings tears to your eyes. Okay, I, and I can handle it, no problem. i got the medications, I can handle it. Um, so they got back to me late yesterday afternoon. And it was a very, very good answer for anybody else but me. The question, the answer was, if we do the CAT scan, and if it comes back showing that you have a possible surgical situation, uh, are you prepared to let somebody operate on your neck? I said to the girl on the phone, I said, touche, good question. I said, I don't know whether I could put myself through another major course of surgery. No. Psychologically wise, I'm just going, this is too much. And I don't want th somebody to think that I'm, what do you call, hypochondriac with all kinds of shit. I mean, the x-rays show what I'm talking about. Yeah, they wouldn't give you a new heart. Got so I left them with a message saying, have them call me back tomorrow with the answer. And she goes, Ed, tomorrow's Saturday. I said, okay, I can wait till Monday or Tuesday, or I, I can either stop in or just whatever. But here's what I said to the doctor. 
And I'm sure that in insurance, Aetna, Travelers, all these different insurance companies will say, we'll give you the CAT scan, but if it says that you need surgery, you got to go get some surgery. Otherwise, it's useless to do a CAT scan if you're, gonna, if you're not going to do the surgery. In other words, why should we pay for a CAT scan if you're not going to go through the surgery? And, and the answer was, that he kind of figured you don't want to go through another surgery. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I'm right. I, I don't want to be on pain medication for the rest of my life also. You know. Um, well, it's, sometimes it's a relief just to know what's wrong with well, you. My aunt, my statement to her was, could you please explain this to him? And I probably should do it face to face, but could you explain this? If I have the CAT scan, it's going to either eliminate or confirm C8 is the problem. And then I have the right to make a decision on, thank God it's not C8, it's something else, I don't know what it is. Or I can make a decision to have the surgery. But if I don't have the CAT scan, that decision is not in my hands. And the question I've got is, would the VA pay for a CAT scan given the fact that I may not want additional surgery? I just want to know what the fuck it is. Well, how can you know if you want additional surgery until you find out what's wrong? What if they did this and they said, Ed, if we don't fix this, your head's going to fall off in two weeks. <laughs> well, yeah, then you'd have surgery. But if, the, if they said, Ed... In 90% of the cases, the pain goes away within a couple months. Then you'd probably say, okay, I'll go with it for a couple months. So you have to know what's wrong before you I've you know you your your several people, you are one of them, who haven't had the neck pain in the past. Right. And it yeah. went away in two weeks. Two weeks, yep. So I'm sitting there going, well, let me give it the two weeks. Um... At least I could give it to two weeks and see if it goes away. But if it turns into three months from now and it's just getting worse, I mean, imagine laying on your back in bed and then trying to lift yourself up and your head has some weight to it. So you got to reach around and back and kind of pull your head up, make sure your head comes with your body, and then to roll over and then you got to do it with this hand to sit up. Um, that's terrible. That's terrible. I mean, I'm here today because I think that what we do is somewhat important when we've done our homework and we've got our list and everything. But the VA is a big issue, and the VA plays into this issue. Yeah. Okay? As to what I'm entitled to or what I'm not entitled to. But let's do this. I mean, there was, there was a new... Do you want to do this first? No one. Okay. I, wanted I, to, I was going to get into the minute. VA. When you, when, when you told me the other day, when we started talking about it, I read... The, you asked me to read the document. I read it. And it's on the left-hand side over here. Uh, oh, no. I can do a search. It's on two. It's on item two or something like that. Hold on. And let me read it. No, I don't want to read too much. Okay. No, I'll read it. Where's the word? Right there. Okay. Okay. I think I should be the one to read it. Okay, but okay. just read one no, sentence because no, 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 I, no. I don't want to no, go no, too no, much no. into no, it. No, no, no. They've evidently said one thing. Now they're saying, second, comma, defendants argue that the United States has failed to establish a likelihood of success on its claim that the defendants violated the Clean Water Act in the past by fly-specking the EPA's pre-litigation technical analysis. Now, let me just, real fast. Second, Defendants argue that the United States has failed to establish a likelihood of success on its claim that the defendants violated the Clean Water Act in the past by fly specking. In other words, well, let, let's 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 go into a, what a preliminary. The, the the government is seeking a preliminary injunction, 
And what a preliminary injunction means is they want the court, before they've won the case, to enter an order against the defendants to stop doing something or to do something. It can go either way on a preliminary injunction. So they haven't proven their case yet, but they still want the court to make orders preventing the defendant from, from doing something. But to do that, they have to show that they're likely to succeed in the case. And four things, and just two off the top of my head. They're likely to succeed in the case, and there, there won't be any irreparable harm to the defendant. It won't really affect him that much, in other words. And what that sentence is saying is that the documents that the government turned over, probably about 600 pages of um, documents about and tests and all this, they're saying they fly spec those documents <clears throat> and pointed out wrong things in those documents, even though they come from tests that were performed in the past. Well, but what else do we have to go on to show that they're likely to succeed but the tests that have already been done? So, of course, that's what I'm going to look at. That's what they submitted. And, of course, I'm going to fly spec it. I didn't know it was fly specking at the time. But I'm, I'm going to make a habit of fly specking because I think, I think it's good to do that, to hold people accountable, to look at the facts, and, and to compare, you know, the documents and the affidavits and the declarations that they submit. So we did get somewhat of a kick out of that, and I do think it would be a great name for a detective agency, you know, Fly Speckers LLC. So that's it. What are you doing with my computer now? Oh, okay, well, here, I was trying to find it again, but that's all right. Yeah, no, you no, got no, it. Listen, you read listen, it. You read no, it. No, okay, well, listen to what I'm saying to you. We read it. If you look up the definition, there's several different variables to defining a fly spec or fly specking, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of them is... It's the little spot that a fly makes when it shits on you. Excrement. Excrement's on you. Okay? Now, the other thing is, when in used in the context that they used it, it appears that what they're saying is, you know, we rushed to this through. We put This is only preliminary. This isn't a good finding. And she goes through and she lifts up every little stone, every little leaf, looking, and she's checking everything. Well... I gotta tell you something, Rachel. Look at that, Ed. I gotta, it works. No, no, listen. Look, they're seeing the definition of fly spec out there. Oh yeah, it sees whatever your right? computer sees, right? No. No, 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 no. Well, no. I got, I got no, a no. weird look we, from no. behind we, the glass. We, no, we see that. Oh. They don't see that. Okay, never mind. We can make it so it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Eric, once while you were. Uh, I know. Do, on one of your trips to the hospital. We're doing something totally different. Got but it. What I'm trying to say is they, in my opinion, complimented you <laughs> saying you got into such minute detail over what words mean, what words don't mean, what was mandated, what wasn't mandated, how many were done, how many weren't done. And they came back with a response trying to justify the sloppiness that they, to trying to justify being sloppy. Yeah, and, and let's circle back to what we were discussing at the beginning of the show, which was painful for me to say. But I said, if Giuliani and his team have the evidence, then put it out there. Right. Because people want to fly spec it. They want to look at it. They want to scrutinize it. And if you hold it back, people think, oh, well, if they do have anything, obviously and, they don't want to put it out because it's either weak or non-existent. And this is why police departments and prosecutors don't want lawyers to have access, early access, to police reports, etc., 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 for fear that lawyers will begin to fly spec the public records and be better prepared when they walk into court. Right. Now, um, we were going to get to the VA. We're going to get to the VA, but while fly specking has led us to the courts, the court record, not having access to it. There's some shit going on with the courts and remote. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. But let's talk about another word that I also learned in a case unrelated to mine. Oh boy. Where the judge, a district court judge in Connecticut, 
was talking about a federal complaint that an attorney had filed. And in her decision, she said that it was prolix, P-R-O-L-I-X, which means unnecessarily wordy, which is not a good thing for a judge to say about you. It's one of those complaints that was 65 pages long. You know what you always used to tell me, don't make your complaints so long, just get to the point. And you know what, you're right. Well, they don't need you're going to gonna have an opportunity. Well, okay, let's, let's educate the people on the other side of the camera. I come to you as a client and I want you to file a lawsuit for me. And you put together a lawsuit that's 120 pages of facts is the reason why I'm filing my lawsuit. And I say to you, Rachel, please, get it into court, file, file five pages, just five pages with the basic allegations. Because they're going to come back with a response, and then at that time we can load the shit onto their plate, onto the table, and say, Your Honor, how much of this information do you want? Okay, when there's a limit to the number of pages, see, that's not going to work, Your Honor. Yeah, there's no limit to the number of pages of a complaint. You know, so I'm, I'm saying that fly specking to me, is a word that I need to keep in the back of my head. I'm not, I wish I knew it when I was younger, because I, I was called a gadfly and probably left a lot of fly specks around in a lot of town halls. Oh, yeah, there, there is a lot of negativity towards flies, isn't there? Yeah. I guess, I guess it's negative, but it could be positive, too. Mm -hmm. So, let's get to the VA. Back in February 2019, the VA had a real shakeup because the uh, Mission Act, and I don't know what mission stands for, but it, that's the short title for the... Take that. Here you go. That, Is it hurting? It. Just take it off. Yeah. I don't know how to take it off. The Velcro. Peel the Velcro. There you go. Got okay, it. Got it. Okay. <sighs> now i got to change and see what we see. Um, okay. So, so, yeah, there's been a lot of changes. And i got to tell you, I think that the Mission Act may be the right way to go. But because it was rushed in and there was not a lot of input taken, um, except possibly from people that worked in the VA, um, it kind of, in some cases, can screw a veteran. You want to put us I mean on? Switch yeah, I mean, in a, in a nutshell, the Mission Act brings care for the veteran, medical care, more into the community, into yes. the community care. And they've been working that way for a while. There was Veterans Choice. I can't get this to go into it. There was Veterans Choice, and right. before that, you pretty much could not get care outside okay. of VA hospital. I had a it's it's the one that says live yeah just don't, don't get distracted i'm not it's okay. fine in 2012 the government rendered a decision 2014 2014 in my favor saying that i could go to any doctor i wanted to outside the va you know i could go to outside doctors for all your care for right. all your medical needs and when the, the and why did why did you get that decision because of my lack of trust in the VA, because they lied to me so many times, and you know, I think they were trying to harm me. They were harming me. <clears throat> um, at the time that they had the scandal in Phoenix, Arizona, Donald Trump jumped in both feet and tried to straighten out the VA. And I'm sure that the Mission Act was a response to what was happening around the country to veterans getting outside care. Now, outside care in the VA has been around for years. It was called fee basis. And we, at the time, and we could dig up the tapes, when they were trying to figure out how to solve the problem at the VA, I held up and said, here's my decision from the BVA. The last couple of paragraphs are to your solution. It's called fee basis. Give everybody fee basis and let them go to private doctors. They passed the Mission Act. And somehow in the Mission Act, 
United Healthcare, a large insurance co health insurance company, somehow started an insurance company called Optum. And Optum was basically presented to the VA as a solution for these veterans that need to be seen on the outside. Now, seen on the outside means um, I live in Texas, and the closest place to get my treatment is 200 miles beyond the nearest hospital. They'll let me go to a local hospital and pay for it rather than pay for me to go 200 miles, whatever. And geographical distance was one of the reasons. Geographical distance, right. lack of staff on at the hospital, at the local hospital, for example, I had to have implants done. And when I went to have my dental work done in Newington, they said to me, oh, we the VA does not do uh, tooth transplant, te what do they call them? Transplants. Implants. Implants. Dental implants. And I said, okay, and I took a temporary fix and I went to the Dominican Republic and the tooth snapped and I had a choice. Go to a third world dentist in the Dominican Republic or fly into Miami and go to the Miami VA and ask them to te temporarily fix it. That's how bad it was. And um, I flew into Miami. I went into the VA. I went into dental as a priority. And here's what the dentist said to me. You need dental implants. And I said, but doc, the, the VA doesn't do dental implants. And he says, what do you mean? We, we do them here every day. So I got on the phone and I called New Haven, spoke to the chief of staff. I said, you lied to me. You said you don't do dental implants. You want send me to Miami. They'll do it tomorrow. But they lied and, to me. Well, and this really comes into play, especially in the past, but I think it's continuing into the future where, you know, women veterans, uh, they really don't have a lot of, you know, care in a lot of aspects of right. um, women's issues. So right. women Fem often right. go... Right, exactly. And... So they came up with this insurance company called Optum, which is really a suit of United Healthcare. And they want me to go to the doctors that are members of the Optum plan. And I got the contract that a doctor would have to sign to join Optum. And one of the provisions is you agree to accept a smaller amount than is paid by Social Security or Medicare. In other words, Medicare is the bottom payer anyhow. And they want you to agree that you're going to take less than Medicare would pay. Okay? And doctors were just saying, no, for the amount of paperwork you want us to do, no, we're not going to do it. And when you say you, what you mean is the doctor. That, well, wouldn't the doctor be agreeing to take less payment than the doctor receives under Medicare? Right. He under the contract. Right. That's and, what you're talking and about. Under, and under the mission and the fee basis, if you accept the government's payment, mm -hmm. it is payment in full. Yes. You can't go to a third-party insurance company. In, in my case, because I'm 100% disabled, they cannot bill any health insurance company for my care because I'm 100%. No matter what part of my body needs to be fixed or addressed medically, it's by government payment. Right. But certainly if somebody receives VA care and it's not related to a service-connected disability, then they do have the third-party insurer pay the... But I have had people... Come up, to me, come up to me, come up to me, and ask me, because they know of my unique BVA decision, how, how does this work, how do you do it? And I say, well, you, you're going to need a lawyer, or you're going to need to find a very, very well-trained veterans advocate, to, because you've got to know all of the twists and turns. I mean, imagine a veteran to a VA, and knowing more about the VA than the person you're talking to. Hey, I think it's possible. You know, it's been, I, you know, people study and they learn things, so they, it's very they possible. Do. They do. And all I'm trying to say is um, the fee basis program was put into place, and there are veterans out there.
who probably don't understand how it works. And then there's the good old boys who, whatever the government says to them, they just take it as fact or truth and they turn around and walk away without asking anybody, well, wait a minute, um, like you did. I would never have picked up on it. They had fee basis. I, that was paying all my bills. Then they passed the Mission Act. Well, the Veterans Care Act is the one that started the problem, okay, and the then the Mission Act came. Okay, well, they passed new laws, regulations, and procedures, which said, okay, now everybody is going to go to this. Nobody's going to be able to no longer go to that, what you had. But it's got to be approved first. But I have, could you look up, I want to read N. Mm -hmm. 1703 something N. Okay, just stand by. Okay. Yeah, I, I read it to somebody who finally got it today. Well, just as a little background, what the VA is trying to say now is because the law has changed and your BVA decision came, the law was different, that you've basically um, been opted out now, and now you're like everybody else. You're back in the pool. The new that law right. terminates your BVA decision rights. And we're looking at 38 United States Code, 1703, section 1703. Subsection N, I think. Yep. Okay. N. Okay. There you go. And it, it and I I wouldn't have found it. Thank God I got Rachel as an attorney handling my VA issues. Fly spec in this. Fly, you're fly spec in the law? Mm -hmm. Okay. We should have a section. There it is. Prohibition a, on we certain we limitations. Can a, you see it? We, yeah. We should have a uh, section of the show called fly specking report. You got it or no? Now here. I can do this. Okay. Okay. There you go. Hold this. Got it. Now, I have a way of reading it to try and emphasize to the people on the other side of the camera so that they understand exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. The secretary, now that's the head guy down in Washington shall, which is a command of the legislature, shall not limit the type of hospital care, medical care, medical services, or extended care services covered veterans may receive under section, under, under this section, if it is in the best medical interest of the veteran to receive such hospital care medical services, extended care services, and determined by the veteran and his medical health provider. Okay? The key being the veteran shall not change how I'm treated. If staying with my current doctors are um Medically necessary. Or find it medically. Okay. Dr. Gluck, the guy in charge of the transplant team, said, I asked him, I said, Dr. Gluck, is it safe for me or is it uh, breaking the continuity of care? In other words, sending me to another hospital, to another heart transplant unit for the work that, to follow up that you did here? And he went like this. Absolutely not. You don't take a patient who's had a transplant in Yale, New Haven, and, and start treating them at Hartford Hospital. Now, it's different if somebody had their transplant in Miami and has now moved to Connecticut. That's kind of you have to, okay? But the continuity of care has to be maintained. Right. Here's what happened with the dentist. If I walk into a dentist under the old plan, I walked in and I said, Doc, I need some dental work done. He says, oh, major dental work. You have to have a couple of implants. You have to have some gum, cutting down a gum. You have to have bone transplant put in there because you got bone loss. And in order to get paid, he has to submit a treatment plan to the VA. Currently? Or in the past as in well? In the past. Okay. Back in... 2016, mm -hmm. 2014, whenever. 
He has to submit a piece of paper to the VA. He says, this is what we're going to do, and this is how much we're going to charge. And the total from the first line item in this table to the last line item in this table, the total amount is, say, $15,000. And when we get done with the first five, we'll respect one-third of the money. Mm -hmm. When we do the second set of five things, we expect the other one-third, another one-third of the total. When we do the last five, we expect to collect the remaining amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then we're done. We did our job, you did your job. Well, I was scheduled to have my teeth done. And because of the instability of my heart, and the poor functioning of my heart, which led to the need for a heart transplant, I couldn't get into the dentist to have him do any dental work. And I had to wait one year after the implants were put in to have the crowns put on. You had to wait a year because it has to solidify in the bone or something. So I couldn't have it done, and I went into the hospital. Well, then, when you have a heart transplant on July 8th of 2019, they tell you you cannot go under anesthesia or have any major surgery, okay, or go to the dead, okay, for one year. I feel like you had your uh, total shoulder replacement before one year. I think I may have had my total shoulder replacement before they did the heart. That was maybe, number two. Maybe. Because, yeah. Okay, so. Yes, you're right. So. Um, Let me see where you were at because I interrupted. Oh, the teeth, you had to wait a oh, year. Oh, so I had to wait a year. So for a year prior, they couldn't do the, the final phases of the treatment plan. They couldn't do it. Then I had the heart transplant. And for a year, they couldn't do it. And then I started to make plans to have it done, but I couldn't get it done because the Mission Act was in play and all of this other stuff is in, they weren't on an approved, they weren't on an approved list of dentists under the new plan. There's all kinds of shit going on. And now that's not in your best So now I go, to the, I go to the doctor and I go, look, I don't give a shit. I can't walk around with half dental work done for the rest of my life. I said, how much does the VA owe you? $2,200 or 20 and I wrote him a check pay, or pay him my credit card. I said, take it off my credit card. I'll pay it. I don't give a shit. I can't do this. So I called up the VA and I went up one side and down the other and I said, look, here's what happens. When you're going to switch from an old style plan to a new plan, part of what you have to carry forward is the unpaid commitments on the old patients. In other words, I had two-thirds of the work done and one-third of the work not done. So you have to take the money that's owed to complete my treatment and move it over into the new plan so that the new plan can use that money to pay for the, pay for the surgery. Well, that caught their attention. When I, when I went, why do I have to get, fall apart and get angry and throw shit and threaten them? Okay, to get to get them to see what's right in front of their eyes. In other words, you approved all of this procedure, and now because of some freaking law, forget about N. Okay, this law, you're going to let me walk around and never complete the procedure. What kind of shit is that? So now I have to, and this is what should be done. I'm asking the VA through my attorney to please provide us with the written treatment plan and estimated cost of all treatment that was approved by the VA prior to anything beginning with Mr. Peruta. See, and I think the argument is reasonable that this really is an emergency because... Oh. If there's infection in your teeth, 
then it travels to your heart and that could be obviously deadly to you. Dr. Gluck, my head guy on the transplant team, um, Dr. Polikas, my primary physician, um, Dr. Soflick, the dentist that I'm going to right now, all agree that they're prepared to write, if requested, they're prepared to write a letter about the continuity of care for the dental work, okay? Mm -hmm. That it should be done, okay? And um, so now I have to ask the doctor for the treatment plan they had approved and ask the VA, what did you do with that extra money that you were gonna spend on me? Where'd that go? In other words, you had a surplus in the Peruta account at the when, when it changed, the law changed. All of that money needed to be put into a surplus account to, for those veterans that were on treatment plans that were going to extend beyond the expiration date of the it was. Yep. So the final thing I want to talk about is something we talked about in 2016 when Donald Trump was elected and Obama left office, President Obama left office, and I said, President Obama's from Chicago. <laughs> He's got some free time, maybe, on his hands. Will he go back to Chicago and attempt to help the city that, in fact, helped him rise? Good topic. I don't know what's going on in Chicago right now. I haven't heard much about it. I'm assuming that the killings have not stopped. But there's no need to report him anymore. Yeah, you just don't hear about it anymore. I was watching a video by that Joe Cole had put up, yeah. and um, he's going strong in Chicago still, yeah. keeping the police officers in line there. But I think there's a chance, and nobody can deny it, that Biden will be inaugurated in January. Right. He's very close to President Obama. One thing that would please me, if it... President Biden were to assign President Obama some duty or some job or some position that would help Chicago. I don't know why that wouldn't be done under these circumstances. I do. do you? Yep, I do. Because I think that if former President Barack Obama became an agent of the government, he would be unable to raise funds at speaking engagements. I know. I mean, you got to understand something. Oh right God. now, he... <laughs> there's a we chihuahua. Put that on camera. There's a chihuahua we doing put something that on pretty camera. comical chihuahua over there. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> Climbing up on top of everything. Okay. Okay. No. What I'm saying is, right now, he's young, he's healthy. And well, not Joe Biden. No, no, no. <laughs> Former President Barack Obama. Right. Still a young man. He's married, he's, he's got a nice looking family, um, and he's still in the money phase. He's, believe me, I'd love to know what his speaking fees are, oh. okay? And now's the time that he goes from being an ordinary citizen to a prominent politician uh, position, and I don't know how else to say this, but I mean, his wife is getting you, some yeah. good fees, too, I would I Have would you assume. ever wondered, have you ever watched the shows coming out of England where they have these big palatial estates? We just watched yes. one called yes. The Girl that, that Was in the Boat and the, they Burned the Place Down. Oh, it was on Netflix. Yeah, it was the name of something. Mrs. Danvers was in yeah, the Mrs. big Danvers, house. Mrs. Danvers, yeah. And Rebecca. House. Rebecca. Rebecca, the movie Rebecca. Right. Now... Have you ever stopped and wondered how did these people acquire 60,000 acres of land in England as their estate? Well, and how do they support it? Well, we rent cottages to the farmers who keep their croppers, do whatever, do whatever, do whatever. But you sit there and say, got the Ford Family Trust, the Ford Trust, 
every person born to a Ford or blood relative of a Ford for the next thousand years will get an income from that trust. And the same thing if I, there's another one that's out there, like Getty, okay? These people amassed such fortunes that their descendants... No, it can really run out, though. Work. No, it can run out. Uh, you know, the Vanderbilt fortune ran out with... Uh, I can't remember what her name Gloria. was. Gloria. Gloria, yeah. That was what's-his-name's mother. Yep. Cooper, Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper's mother, yeah. But anyway, we got six minutes left. Let's shut it down. Well, Leave some time for the closing. And, and, uh, you made it through good today, Ed. I'm proud just, of you I'm, with that I'm neck. I'm curious as to how good was it on News Now Houston, News Now San Diego, uh, American News Media Center, Summary Judgment Talk Show, and Facebook. One thing we didn't get to, and we'll save it for next week, is these remote trials that are going on in Connecticut. And I've been scheduled to have my first trial by remote uh, next month. So it should be interesting trying to corral witnesses and evidence. I'm going to put in a request. I'm going to put in a request, and they're going to sit there and say, because I'm your employee, the answer is no. Now, it's not a jury trial. They haven't attempted that yet. Although, I thought I heard somewhere they were, they were doing jury trials again, but certainly not here in Connecticut. So everybody have a good week. Stay safe. It's a perhaps travel week for a lot of people. It's a family week, obviously, Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll see you next week on Saturday. Bye. Bye-bye.